Siveni Ivanagitsner, some of you may not like what I'm going to address in this video, but as a political scientist and a journalist who covered the Syrian war, where Turkey and Russia also play an essential role, I would like to elaborate my anger on Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan. A few days ago, after posting the previous video on Artsakh, a friend of mine texted me asking what could have Pashinyan done except for signing the deal and would it have been different under someone else's leadership. The problem is not really about the leader himself, but about his foreign and domestic policy choices before the eruption of the war. Therefore, I believe the outcome of the war would have been different with Pashinyan himself in power, but with different foreign and domestic policy choices. First of all, let us all agree that most Armenian leaders since the liberation of Artsakh in the early 90s hadn't done enough to protect the region from Azerbaijan. I watched many videos from the recent battles and I haven't seen enough fortifications, tunnels and military bunkers. And I'm wondering if the military budget of Armenia is much less than of Azerbaijan, then why haven't we resorted to the guerrilla warfare or the fourth generation of asymmetrical warfare. If you don't know what type of warfare techniques these are, I put links in the description below. So militarily speaking, since Pashinyan is in power only two and a half years ago, he doesn't really bear full responsibility because his predecessors had more time to fortify the front lines in Artsakh. Instead, they filled their pockets. This statement is aimed at those accusing me of being pro saxian or Kochahian or whatever. Now, after the Velvet Revolution in Armenia in 2018, it was pretty obvious that Pashinyan is shifting Armenia's priorities from Eurasia into the Atlantic, and namely to NATO. That is when the name of George Soros started to frequently mentioned by some journalists and experts after the revolution. For those who don't know who George Soros is, he is a Hungarian-born American billionaire. Through his Open Society Foundation, he provides millions of dollars in grants to non-governmental organizations mostly active in Eastern European countries and particularly in ex-Soviet Union states. Therefore, the colored revolutions that have taken place in these countries during the last few decades are associated with Soros' name. In Armenia, the Soros Foundation supports numerous NGOs that run programs related to human rights and democratic reforms. For example, more than $1 million was granted to the Yerevan University itself to implement special educational programs. These organizations indoctrinated the youth in Armenia and urged them to hold Western values and have spread anti-Russian sentiments. Therefore, these organizations with their years of activities have contributed to the victory of Nikol Pashinyan. Now, these organizations may look innocent on the surface and preach everything that you might think is beautiful, but the truth is the NGOs of George Soros in Armenia and elsewhere are like a worm that gnaws fruit from the inside. If this is not an axiom, the future of Armenia is in great trouble. Don't take my words, but the words of an Armenian volunteer soldier who just returned from Artsakh, who said to Free West Media, I quote, the absolute majority of his team members are in one way or another sponsored by funds affiliated with George Soros. Moreover, the Armenian capitulation was long propagated by Soros. Soros himself had called upon the international community to assist Erdogan and Aliyev in every way possible. All along, the destructive paths of Pashinyan Soros acolytes were at the forefront of his treacherous endeavors. Unfortunately, Pashinyan's reforms Reform plans were not very effective. One area where he was quite effective, however, was spreading anti-Russian hysteria. And for two years, Armenia's main foreign and internal policy has been focused on distancing itself from Russia, which continues being its only ally and the guarantor of the Armenian statehood. Sivelia Avina this is the map of Armenia. We are surrounded by two hostile countries, Turkey and Azerbaijan. And the Armenian-Georgian relations are not the best. Iran was our only good partner and neighbor, and our route to the outside world. Instead of improving Armenia's relations with Iran, Pashinyan opened an embassy in Israel and angered Iran. I mean, come on! Israel is a strategic ally of Azerbaijan, which supplies Baku with billions of dollars of weaponry. Can Armenia afford to buy such weaponry? The answer is no. So why do you anger your only good neighbor, and why angering Russia? Armenia is a tiny state and it has no access to the seas or oceans and it doesn't have oil or gas 
or natural materials that make it strong enough to be self-dependent in terms of security and economy. Therefore, all previous policies of Pashinyan were disastrous for the Armenians. Look, you can defend Pashinyan as much as you like, but anyone with a basic understanding of geopolitics can tell you that Pashinyan's calculations were against the Armenian interests, and he brought our nation on her knees. We are all feeling defeated now, and we need to live with this maybe our entire lives. This map is circulated by Azerbaijani activists on Twitter. Make no mistake, this map is not simply a wishful thinking. It can turn to a bitter reality in a few decades if Pashinyan opens a corridor between Nakhichevan and Azerbaijan. And hey, look who published a similar map a few years ago. It is the Soros-funded EVN report. Although the organization deleted the map after an outrage, but again, make no mistake, the Soros organization did this on purpose in order to check the reaction of the Armenian street. And if there were no outrage, then they keep it and your eyes get used to it. The only positive thing in the deal is the presence of the Russian peacekeeping forces because Russia is the only power in the region who is able to protect the Armenian sites which will be handed over to Azerbaijan soon. With that being said, while pro pashinyan friends rightly say that predecessors of Pashinyan were pro-Russian oligarchs. But none of them gave Russia a strong foothold in the Caucasus like Pashinyan did, thanks to his wrong calculations. To conclude, a hundred years ago, the Armenians lost one and a half million people and Western Armenia. A few days ago, the Armenians lost most of Artsakh. This battle is far from ending as Erdogan's Turkey will never give up before complete annihilation of the Armenians. It is time for Armenia to build a strong army backed by technology. Armenians have a good tech sector and it is of vital importance to develop radars, drones, air defenses, fortifications for heavy artilleries and underground tunnels. I've been your host Kevok Almasyan of Seriana Analysis. If you like the content of my channel, kindly hit the subscribe button. It helps me a lot.